Well, and welcome back to another episode from Driving Britain. Today, we're going to be looking at 25 foods that Americans love that the rest of the world think are disgusting. You ready to introduce your international friends to your favorite American foods? Or are you international and you are very curious about our American, you know, delicacies? And let's face it, that doesn't really narrow it down much because everybody knows that America isn't really the best example when it comes to eating habits. They like a lot of greasy deep fried food and they like a lot of sugar. The amount of salt that you get on the average meal is enough to run the average British person for about three months. Or at least that's the impression that we get. Well, there's only one way to find out just how much truth there is to the different ideas and stereotypes we keep on seeing. And that's to have a look at a video that's going to show us all about American foods. Or at least dodgy American food combinations. We're going to be watching List 25 and Mike from List 25 is going to be leading us through, as you guessed, 25 food combinations or different foods from America. I want to know whether our interpretation of American food is you know, as bad as what we really think. We only really get our information from the TV, YouTube and Hollywood movies. And that's always known to, you know, pull out the, the most truth of all the different sources out there. I mean, where else can you go to find more truth than off YouTube and Hollywood? <laughs> so let's try and cut to the chase and get straight into the video and see if there's any actual truth to the myths and mystique around American food. You ready to introduce your international friends to your favorite American foods? Or are you international and you are very curious about our American, you know, delicacies? Well, you might want to hold <laughs> off a moment and pay attention to this list first. Many American foods are considered too sweet, too plasticky, or too salty to non-American taste buds. Ooh, did he just say too plasticky? Now, I've got a you know a few mental images of American food, but plastic in the food, that wasn't really one of them. Okay. Mmm, plastic. Yummy. Any guesses on what might be on this list? Well, I'm Mike with List 25, and let's find out now by checking out these 25 foods Americans love that non-Americans think are disgusting. 25. Chicken and waffles. Honestly, when I first what? heard of this combo, I was a bit taken aback too. However, it's totally worth trying. No, it's you just not. have to get past the audacity of it all. It's not that much different from adjusting to other things in this country, if you think. Yeah, firstly, American waffles are so sweet that it's almost inedible. And then he's pouring syrup or honey or something like that on there. And then you're going to stick chicken with it. Now, I've had chicken and honey before, but that, I think that's a step too far. Think about it. I mean, is it genius or insanity? Insanity. 24. Mint flavored things. Think York peppermint patties, mint ice cream, or junior mints. Or, you know, mint flavored Oreos. A lot of people that grew up outside of the US think these type of treats taste like eating from a tube of toothpaste. I get it. No, it's not really a thing with the UK because we have a lot of mint chocolate bars and we have some mint biscuits. I don't know that I've ever had mint Oreos, but I would certainly buy them. I quite like mint foods. We do have kind of chocolate bars, which are biscuit and chocolate and some creamy stuff in the middle that are called penguins. Well, by the way, they do some mint chocolate bars with their selection. Plus, we've got things like the one of the oldest chocolate bars that's out, which is fries chocolate, certainly the oldest in England. And that's one of the oldest chocolates out, I think, let alone in the UK. So I think a mint and chocolate are mint and different foodstuffs, you know, like uh, sweet foodstuffs. I don't mean mint with chicken. Well, actually, you stick mint on lamb, don't you? You just put mint with potatoes. But I think that's a little bit of mint from the garden rather than peppermint that you're going to be getting in your biscuits. And I think that that's odd or disgusting. I'm with you on that one. It's, but, you know, I'm still going to eat mint chocolate chip ice cream for dessert, but I get it. Yeah, that's nice as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, mint and... What the... Uh oh, the bag was ripped. This is probably, oh no. 23, corn dogs. If you think about the way most hot dogs are produced in this country and what they're often made of, I agree. It's totally disgusting. However, if you deep fry that baby in some sweet corn batter, it's right up there with pizza when you're on your way home after a night out on the town. Just sweet, crunchy, worthwhile regret. Okay, now that corn dog, is that a hot dog inside a batter? If it is, then I've had something similar, but it wasn't in a batter. It was just in a kind of a bread more than anything. I think it's supposed to be um, perhaps a European version of the American corn dog. A deep fried version, I think that would probably be quite nice. But I think it might be quite greasy, so I don't know if I'd eat too many or too much of one of them. But it doesn't seem disgusting, no, that seems alright. 
Oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 22. Twizzlers. Many people complain about it tasting like plastic that's cherry flavored, and I have no defense for this one. You can use it as a straw though, which actually, Sour Punch are better for. Yeah, we have that in the UK. It's called red licorice, if it's the same thing, which I think it looks like it is. And red licorice, that's still fairly popular in the UK. It's, um, it's not really anything like normal dark black licorice. I don't mean licorice wood, I mean, you know, those black sticky sticks that you get that's supposed to be licorice, but it turns out just to be something else with aniseed flavouring that we all believe is licorice. But either way, the red licorice, whether it is actual licorice or not, that's still relatively popular in the UK, but it is very nice. We do get also the, um, what's called shoelaces in the UK. I don't mean things that you tie your shoes with, I mean the sweets. And they're basically that stuff, but thin strands of it. So if you unwound one of those main ones, and they're strawberry flavoured, and they're really, really nice. But they are a bit of a weird texture, I guess. It's not really jelly, it's not, I'm not really sure what it is. It is kind of like a plastic, so I guess in that sense, then I see where it's coming from, but we do eat those, we quite like those. So again, in the UK, we're not thinking it's disgusting. Maybe we're just being too Americanized. <laughs> uh, they're great for sipping soda out of. Also great for <laughs> also great for empty calorie consumption. Or you could just not oh, eat yeah, them because right, yeah. they're gross. Well, hang on. That means that they're not sweet. And the thing that I'm talking about, they're actual kind of candy. It is like um, a plasticky jelly type thing. It's not any type of actual plasticky type thing or... Or anything like that it's just um i don't really know how to describe it if anybody from the uk or any other country where you know what the shoelaces or red licorice is made of where you know what sort of texture it is try and describe it in the comment section so that everybody else can get the idea because i can't think of how to describe it but either way i wouldn't say that you would use it to drink a soda out of and i wouldn't really put it down as by the way he's describing it as more like well he's making it sound like you're just going to eat the straw <laughs> No, we don't eat many straws. We drink soda with straws now and again, but we don't eat them afterwards. I hate Twizzlers. 21. Candy corn. Ah, uh, quite possibly the most divisive candy out there, even for us Americans. I'm totally on team no on the candy corn. Am I? I'm on team yes. Sorry, Ryder. Sorry, Is that Crystal. exactly what it looks I'm like? I'm on team yes. You might be on team no. I love candy corn and little candy pumpkins too. Oh, everything's great. Now, to me, that looks like actual pieces of sweet corn that's then been wrapped with some type of candy. Or are they completely candy and they're just kind of coloured to make it look like it's corn, but really they're just very sweet pieces of candy. Which, if that is the case, as long as they're not too sweet, then that might be quite nice. But if they're really, really sweet, like American sweet, then maybe not. But if that turns out to be actual sweet corn that's then being cupped with candy, then that's just wrong on so many levels. You get something that's quite quite good for you and quite wholesome and then you stick a big lump of candy sugar to it i'm not sure that that'll be a good thing and also isn't that kind of a bit i know a bit odd you're dressing candy up as you know, a vegetable or something like that so you're kind of making it look like as if it's something good and wholesome when really it's just you know sugar i love candy corn 20 sweet potato casserole okay what? so two things marshmallows seem to ruin a lot of food for foreigners there's a theme they are weird and probably aren't even really food. Take that and put it on top of sweet potato casserole, which has lots of butter and sugar added, and it's just a little too much. Now, we have sweet potato, and you could use sweet potato in some type of pie or something, you know. When I say pie, I don't mean pastry, I mean where you get cheese and potato pie, which is basically just cheese and potato mixed together, and then you put it in the oven to melt the cheese. We also have, you know, cauliflower cheese. It's not really a pie, but you kind of put it in the oven. Would you use sweet potato with that? Or if you're going to make an actual casserole, you could use cubes of sweet potato, just the same as you would normal potatoes. But the thing that we don't do when we make pies and casseroles and things including sweet potato is add marshmallow. Who in their right mind is going to spread marshmallow on an actual meal? I can't even think of an equivalent. I was going to say something like that's like sprinkling sugar over your cottage pie. But that's worse. It's way, way worse. You're actually melting marshmallow on top of your dinner. That's so bizarre, that is. You're right about that one. America, you can keep that one because marshmallows so sickly sweet you can only eat one or two bits of it anyway. And then mixing that with your dinner? Who even come up with that idea? <laughs> you can keep it. That one, that is disgusting. 19. Root beer. Now, I've heard this from people from several different areas of the world. 
It's the flavor used for cough and cold medicine all over the rest of the world. I wonder if it's related to using <laughs> kilometers or Celsius. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh. I like root beer. I really do. 18. Right, well, I know the taste that he's talking about, that cough medicine type taste. I'm not really sure how you'd describe I guess it's got a bit of a kind of a mentally bit to it. Yeah, I know the name root beer, but I did know that root beer tastes of cough medicine. Which then begs the question, why on earth does anybody actually buy it and why do you drink it so often in America? Is it because you feel like you're getting a hit of cough medicine, which you know usually makes you feel better, so it's kind of a you know, bit of a psychological thing, you feel like you're getting a boost? Or do you actually like that taste? I'm definitely putting that one into the disgusting pile. That's another one you can keep. You are absolutely right. That is something that most of the world would think is disgusting. Outback Steakhouse. From the bloomin' onion to all the other things, Australians are not impressed and honestly confused by this popular American chain, which, <laughs> by the way, originated in Tampa, Florida. The original is still there on Henderson Avenue. Boulevard? Henderson Boulevard. Why does I say Avenue? Henderson Boulevard, that's the one I used to go to all the time, not even knowing it was the very first one. Visitors are not sure there's anything truly Australian about the place, not even Foster's. It yeah, I don't know what would be Australian anyway. You know, when we think of Australian foods, we think of barbecues, but outside of that, I don't know that we would even associate any particular food with Australia, not from the UK at least. We assume that Australians eat pretty much the same as what we do. I know that we kind of have different stereotypical images in our mind about what sort of foods you would get from other countries, but Australia is one of them ones where just a blank space comes up. I just, I just think that they're the same as the UK. Or the UK is same as them. I'm not meaning it in any one direction. I just mean that I don't I don't think that I'd get anything unusual or outlandish from Australia. So when you get an Australian steakhouse or whatever that place is, I'm not sure that I'd have a, a view one way or the other on what I was getting. But if I started just to see American type foods in there, then I would know that it was just you know, a namesake and not an actual authentic Australian or Outback type place. Basically, the thing that will give it away is if they sell American style foods. <laughs> So I guess if that's what they're doing, then that's going to give the game away pretty quickly. Whether that falls into the foreigners would find that disgusting, I'm not sure about that. It did originate in Tampa Bay, so, you know, there's that. I haven't had a blooming Onion in a long time. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. Oop. Oops. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's going to fall. E yep. Yep. Hmm. 17. So is that supposed to be an Australian delicacy or something like that? Or, yeah, a popular Australian dish? Is that where you picked that one particular dish? I know there's some Australians that watch these videos. If you could add to the comment section what he's just been shoving down his cake hole because we have no idea. Cake? And is it nice? And candies. I'm sure this isn't a huge shocker at this what? point. Most chocolates and cakes are... So what is it you thought... This cake's got a lot of sugar, but I think we can do better than that. <laughs> Let's fill it full of sweets as well. <laughs> Why did you do that? Why would you do that? Let's go back to that image if we can get it. I'm sure this isn't a... Look at that. That's just like saying, yeah, we have got quite a lot of sugar in this, but I think if we pack it full of sweets, then I think we can up the ante just that little bit more. As far as you haven't poured syrup over it or something like that and then coat the syrup in sugar. <laughs> that looks as bad as it could possibly get. And you're going to not just eat that, you're going to feed that to the kids as well, aren't you? <laughs> In fact, the kids are going to go and grab a handful of them sweets because that's exactly what I would do. Huge shocker at this point. Most chocolates and cakes are way sweeter here in the US than anywhere else in the world. Most recipes are sweet to the point of disgusting. Yeah, well, normal chocolate cake and stuff like that in the UK can only just about eat that because that reaches the upper end of my kind of sugar tolerance for what I can eat before it starts to become too sickly. So if you get a normal Victoria sponge, which is like a sponge with some butter icing top cream in the middle and then sponge on the bottom, maybe a spread of jam in the middle, a pretty basic cake, then that's not too sweet. That's that's pretty run of the mill. But then when you start to add things like chocolate coating and stuff or marzipan, then that's when, for me at least, they start to get a bit too sweet. So if you added all of that to it, I think that the most I would manage is a bite every third hour in a day or something like that. And it would probably take me about that long to stop bouncing off the walls after eating that much sugar. <laughs> but if you've got to get up early for work, a quick scoop of that on your way out the door, that will get you working all right. Hey, don't insult my Reese's. By the way, greatest candy ever. Fight me. 
that just goes to show to me how bad American candy really is. Because we do occasionally get Reese in the UK. You get normal Reese bars sold in most shops, but then you get a few other Reese products sold in little shops and things like that around us. And Reese are so sickly. You literally take a bite and you have to wait another 20 minutes before you can take another bite. So the fact that he's saying that that's the best of their candy, that's like saying... I don't know, it's like being asked, would you like to be punched in the nose or punched in the eye? Which one do you think is best? <laughs> that's the sort of Reese's best. That's the way I view it. I think that Americans just don't really know how nice sweets should be. I'm not saying that British sweets are the best in the world or anything like that, but I know that British chocolate's quite nice, and I know that our sweets are a lot more well, palatable, as in to the point of they're edible. <laughs> Whereas American ones, for the rest of the world, they're just... They're just too much. And Reese are a great example of that because they're just so sickly sweet, but they also make it into other foreign markets such as, you know, British shops and stuff like that. And I'm sure that you get them in plenty of other shops around the world. And if that really is the best of American sweets, then I feel sorry for you Americans. And if I could, I'd send you all a big box of British sweets for you to try so you can know what you're missing out on, or as far as we believe. Peanut butter and chocolate. And again, fun fact, it's my favorite candy. And I share a birthday with the, cre uh, the creator of it, so that's kind of neat. But all Reese's everything is fantastic. That's why I bought a giant bag of it. <coughs> oh, oh, root beer and blooming onion. <laughs> he's gonna eat all of oh. these as he's going along. Is 16, grits. It's a hit or miss, even for us Americans. Speaking from experience, the problem is that they're quite easy to over or undercook. And they have a very bland taste, so seasoning is important. Although, if you're from the South, you love grits. Uh, pro tip, if you're trying them for the first time, try them in the southern parts of the U.S. Florida doesn't count! Because uh, I've no idea what that is, so I can't give an opinion on that one way or the other. So if anybody that does know what it's like, put it into the comment section so that we can all have a look and understand whether it's really, really gross or whether it's actually an all right one, just a bit plain and boring. Maybe by plain and boring, he actually means normal because <laughs> all the rest of these haven't exactly been very normal, have they? So maybe what he really means by that is just an everyday food that most of the people around the earth would probably eat. Add it to the comment section so we all know. Because while it's in the South geographically, it's not really a Southern state in any other aspect. Also, it's true. Don't buy instant grits. Like oatmeal, it's just not the same. And try lots. Ah, uh, hang on, you mean porridge, don't you? In the UK, you just it's just oats, isn't it? Porridge oats. Now, it is bland, but in the UK, we would add either a, a teaspoon of jam or about the same amount of honey or maybe even a little, a little sprinkling of sugar. But we call it porridge or, or it could just be called Quaker oats. But it is quite a good nutritional meal. It's um, more of a winter thing in the UK than anything. Pour some milk in it, shove it in a microwave for a while. It's quite nice. But it is a bit boring as a breakfast goes, I guess, compared to what you can get. But if it's a cold morning, it's quite a nice one. Lots of cheese and butter. And you know what? Pop a fried egg on whoa, top. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cheese and butter in porridge. For real. No, 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 no. No, you add a little teaspoon of jam or a little bit of honey or a little sprinkling of sugar, something just to sweeten it and flavour it. What you don't do is add a meal to it because it's a breakfast cereal. It's just plain oats. It's not meant to... Assume you're on about the same thing, which it seems to be, because you had a Quaker box in the background. It looked like the Quaker oats box. You wouldn't stick cheese on your porridge or, or any of them other disgusting-sounding things. <laughs> you're right, you can keep that one. It's just gone from an all-right food to a not-all-right food because of what you've done to it. <laughs> Shrimp and grits. Go for that. Oh, grits are... What? No way. Why would you be sticking shrimp in your porridge? Who even came up with that idea? Who first tried that? Who sat there with a bowl of porridge on the morning, having their breakfast, and thought, I know what I'll do. What will make this better is if I stick some shrimp, some prawns in there, because that'll make it nicer. That's just disgusting. You can definitely keep that one. We'll keep the porridge out so you can have the rest of it. <laughs> I used to not like them. I actually used to really not like grits. I love them now. They're fantastic. And he I can only assume that he's speaking about something different. Maybe Quaker make different products that are sold within the US and it's not just porridge oats. It did look like porridge and it was a Quaker box, so I'm not really sure one way or the other. Again, somebody add to the comment section 
to help out my blatant ignorance of American foods. And yeah, Florida's not th the South. Like, you can't go to Miami and be like, I'm in the South. Like, no, no, sorry. 15, American cereal. So let's return to the topic of sugar. Appalled is an appropriate word. Why do we put marshmallows in cereal? This one doesn't Yeah, we're getting quite a few American type cereals on the shelves in the UK nowadays. And they do sell because people like the sugar. I don't mean they like the sweet taste, I mean they like the feeling once the sugar's running through their body. There used to be the old myth of McDonald's adding sugar to their products so that it helped some responses in the brain which kind of triggered a bit of a pleasure response which made you keep going back for more, which then turned out to be pretty true. American cereals, very much the same as that. Cereal is supposed to be a very functional thing to give you some energy to set you up for the day until lunchtime. You eat it on the morning first thing. Yeah, you want a bit of a sugar boost to help get you started along with your coffee and all the rest of it. But really that much sugar? I think the sugar crash you're going to get afterwards is going to far outweigh any sort of boost you initially got. And I don't know that I'd even want something anywhere near that sweet in the morning. Because I mean, they, they're all right to eat dry, but as a normal cereal... Um, I'm just not really sold on it. I like things like Frosties where it's you know soaked in sugar. So it's not so much about the sweet. It's just that, well, you Americans, you just go too far with the sugar. You go too sweet. We really can't deal with that much sweet type taste in our food. I don't think it's about our concern for how much sugar we're consuming. Because I think most of us are ignorant to just how much sugar's in a lot of these type products in the first place. It's just that they're literally not edible. I have marshmallows, but it should. Let's see. Let's look at this. Serving size, one cup, total fat, one and a half, not terrible. Where's the sugar? 12 grams of added sugar. Total sugars, 12 grams, including 12 added sugars. Oh. 12 grams plus 12 added sugars. Well, 12 grams, I'm pretty sure that a gram of sugar is about a flat teaspoon. So the type of size spoon that you use if you're making yourself a coffee or something, those little spoons, a flat one of those, I think that that's about a gram of sugar, give or take. So in your bowl of cereal, you've got 12 sugars. So if you had a coffee with 12 sugars in, that's the equivalent of your bowl of cereal. Oh, that sounds pretty nice. If you want to be a diabetic by lunchtime. Oh, that's a lot. For one serving. So, nine servings times 12. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's great. Murica. 14. <laughs> Hot Pockets. What we failed to warn non-Americans about is that you have to wait for it to cool down first. Or try to. I put this one in the microwave a few minutes ago. We're going to find out. God, I hope I don't burn my mouth. But then the middle is still frozen. I know it's awful, but so good. Ow. Yeah, we get Hot Pockets in the UK as well. And they are pretty nice, but it is right. It is difficult to try and make sure it's heated all the way through without it being molten on the outside. But the other thing that we have in the UK that burns our faces off just the same as that are McDonald's apple pies. Has anybody ever managed to buy and eat a McDonald's apple pie without burning their mouth? That's pretty much the whole hot pocket scenario again, isn't it? But they are nice. I don't think that they're disgusting. I think that the way it burns is not so great, but well, other than that minor hiccup, they're pretty good. Ow. Ow. <laughs> oh. mm. Mm. You've had time to cool down. That's not fair. Thirteen. Yeah, like the apple pies, you can leave them for half an hour and you think it feels cool when you touch the outside and you take a bite and your lip just bubbles instantly. <laughs> they're just not good. They taste fantastic, but they just burn you every time. Processed cheese. Two words. Cheese food. Not real cheese. Cheese food. American cheese is not the way to show patriotism. Virtually any other cheese will taste better. I do, however, have fond memories of Cheese Whiz and Triscuits. I, I mean, I know, it's so gross and so bad for you, I actually refuse to have it in my house. Do you know why? Because I can't help myself, and I will eat it all. Hashtag guilty. Yeah, I think that the easiest way to describe American cheese is you have spray cheese. Any cheese that comes out of a spray can isn't anything to do with cheese. <laughs> and I think that your little processed cheese things that you had there, we put them on burgers. You can get them in you know, packs of 10 and stuff like that with a cellophane wrap around them that always rips the cheese in half when you try to get them out. Put them on your barbecue burgers. So we do eat that stuff as well, but we don't eat it as cheese. We eat it as burger cheese, which is almost like a separate thing altogether. As far as actual real cheese goes, 
I think that you hardly get any normal actual real cheese in the US. There's just versions of stuff that's made to seem, look and smell and taste a bit like cheese rather than actual real cheese. The fact that you eat so much of that processed cheese stuff or whatever it is and the spray cheese and all the rest of it, you know, it's just not great. Whereas in Europe and a lot of other countries around the world, we eat proper cheese, we have access to proper cheese, we like proper cheese, so there's no way we're going to go for that horrible processed stuff unless we're making a burger on a barbecue. And we definitely wouldn't go for a can of cheese, a spray can full of cheese stuff. Although we do have spray cream, and that's no closer to cream than what your spray cheese is to cheese, I guess, <laughs> which doesn't seem or taste like it. It is a really popular thing, though. We do have kind of a spray cheese, actually. It's called Primella, isn't it? I think you can get a spray version of that and you also get the squeezy tubes and that stuff's really nice yeah I, I can eat just a whole tube of that on its own but would I class it as a cheese no not even slightly it's more like a spread if anything but it does taste kind of cheesy we do have fake cheese type stuff in the UK when you buy things like macaroni cheese if it's already made then a lot of the cheese that you're getting that is fake cheese it's cheese flavoring of some sort rather than anything that's actually come from a block of cheese other times I just use like a Parmesan, but I don't think even then, because Parmesan cheese is so expensive, you're more likely to get some type of flavouring rather than actual Parmesan. What they'll probably do to make the ingredients look better is add a very, very fine sprinkling of Parmesan and then also add the term in the ingredients of flavourings. So really they have added some Parmesan so they can list it rightfully onto the ingredients and that's what you think the cheesy taste is coming from but really there's such a small amount of Parmesan in there the real cheese flavours coming from flavourings rather than anything to do with anything you think is related to cheese. Or maybe that's just my cynical view which just happens to be right. Ice. Is ice really food? Well, according to food safety regulations, yes. There have been studies that show it might be a cleaner to drink from a toilet bowl at certain restaurants. However, the more ice, the better for most Americans. In other countries, the massive amounts of ice served in the States are confusing and absurd. We even have. So these are reusable ice cubes. The water's in there and you freeze them. So that way. Yeah, we have bags of ice that we buy from supermarkets and stuff like that or you can get them directly out your fridge if you've got that type of fridge so we do consume quite a lot of ice in the uk and i know that a lot of europe's the same especially in the warmer parts you know like south france and spain and stuff like that italy and especially in the summer months throughout the whole of europe you're going to be consuming quite a bit of ice but it is also covered by the food regulations and standards and stuff because you don't want just somebody scooping up some pond water knocking it out into cubes and shoving it into the local supermarket you want to know that it's actual clean drinkable fresh water you want to know that the ice cubes are from the same quality of water as what a standard bottle of bottled water would be and a lot of ice cubes that you do see out are advertised as from spring water i've never really looked at the ingredients list on a bag of ice to make sure it looks the same as what you see on the back of a bottle of water i've just kind of always assumed that they were the same and i know that it usually says on the front from spring water so I think that we're pretty much the same as the US when it comes to ice. We want to know that we're only getting water and not something nasty along with the ice cube. You can actually quote unquote wash your ice. Yeah. So, cheers. 11. Fruit salad. The big complaint here? Well, more marshmallows. See, what? I told you there's a thing. You're going to ruin it again. Oh, God, fruit salad is gross. 10. High fructose. Hang on, hang on. Let's not move on from that fruit salad. You've done something good for a change with your big bowl of fruit. And then you go and fill it full of marshmallow. Of all things marshmallow. Come on. Why are you even having the fruit? Why don't you just go straight for the marshmallow, which is obviously the bit that you really want. Otherwise, you wouldn't put it in your fruit salad. Now, a lot of people in the UK would eat a fruit salad because they're nice, they're juicy, they're refreshing, and it's really good for you. We wouldn't really dream of adding marshmallows to it. We might eat marshmallows separate to it. We would have no complaints about eating marshmallows as well as it, but would we put it into the same bowl? Well, no, because they just don't go together. <laughs> That's like adding jam and peanut butter, which I you know is another thing that you weird Americans do, but it's just too sweet for the rest of the world. Toast corn syrup. Here's another culprit for why our food tastes so disgustingly sweet. Read your labels, people. It's... So sticky. Good for baking. Nah. Yeah, corn syrup, it used to be 
completely banned in the UK, but I'm sure that we end up with corn syrup in quite a lot of products nowadays. And I'm sure that that decision was based more around money than public health. Who got the money and how and why? No idea. But I know that something that was very strongly believed not to be a good thing to have in foods is now in a lot of foods around a lot of European countries. Sometimes it's just snuck in through the back door using sneaky different ways with how they add the ingredients to foods and other times it's just blatantly added. But basically corn syrup is so much sweeter than sugar it means that companies can add a lot less product to achieve the same amount of sweetness which is why they started to switch towards corn syrup but it's incredibly bad for you in the sort of levels that you get in American foods which is why we didn't want the same in UK and European foods but it's just it's getting more and more so it really shouldn't and people should be really not happy about it and they should be doing everything they can to make that not happen but like always it is slowly happening so corn syrup yeah I think that can stick on your disgusting list partly because of the health concerns around it but mainly because it's just so sweet it's just that sweet that it almost ruins every single food it goes in and a lot of chocolate where they've used corn syrup for most people in the UK it makes the chocolate almost inedible I would think that chocolate sales in the UK are probably half to a third now to what they used to be 20 years ago because there's so many products like corn syrup and artificial sweeteners being used in chocolate it's made them just so sickly and disgusting not all chocolate we still get some proper original tasting british styled type chocolate but there's a lot of you know imposters on the market nowadays and uh, standard sort of labels and it really it stands out people just don't buy anywhere near of, as much of it as what we used to when we was younger you know, I'm from a, a generation where we used to eat chocolate bars without thinking about it and we used to have fairly active lifestyles as well so it was never an issue it wasn't kind of far past where I was growing up when things started to change and chocolate bars was being frowned upon because people were starting to get bigger and the chocolate bars were being blamed but in reality it wasn't it was just because computer games were getting better that's all Either way, let's get to the bread. Now, everybody knows before we even press play that American bread has a massive cocktail of chemicals in it, enough to make it last for about 9,000 years on the shelf without even wrapping it in a bag. Fine. White bread. Take all the hearty grains of nutrition and chuck it out the window. Replace it with <laughs> yeah, sugar exactly. and whatever will make the bread last until the year 2075. Yeah, I think that American bread is so far removed from what actual normal bread that we would know the taste of in you know the uk france spain europe what we interpret as the taste of bread and you know the way that bread feels the texture and the smell american bread it's just nothing like that nothing like that at all if you want to know just how different american bread is to uk bread if you go through to our channel and look down our video list or look on our reactions playlist you'll see a video called chemical cocktails or something similar to that and it had all the different ingredients lists from the UK to the US and there's like massive amounts of chemicals added to the US. And it was you know, just a huge list of 20 or 30 items that was in the bread. Then you looked at the ingredients list for the UK bread, there's like four things in there. And they were all the things that you'd expect to see in bread. But American bread, it's just nowhere near that marker. It's something that, well, sorry America, but you really can keep. I love all breads. That's not fair. That's not fair. It's good. Eight. Ranch dressing. Apparently, it's not a thing in Europe. Salty, fatty mayo. I can't say I understand this one. Ranch dressing is my absolute favorite condiment. Ketchup? Now that's gross. Yeah, I think that most people in the UK have no idea what ranch dressing tastes like. And we know what mayo tastes like, but ranch dressing? Fatty? I'm not sure. That sounds like it's something completely different to what we would normally expect for a mayonnaise type product. So, if you do know what ranch dressing tastes like, in a way that you can give a comparison or a description from a British or a European food, then add it to the comment section so that we can all get an idea of what it's supposed to taste like and why it's being kept in America and not spread to the UK or Europe. What is it that tastes so bad about it that stopped it from coming across the channel? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Those fighting words. Ketchup is fantastic. Mayonnaise is the greatest condiment. Oh, Crystal, you and I have, we're gonna have a talking. <laughs> you made me say ketchup's gross. That's so rude. I love ketchup. Ketchup's ketchup or right. catsup? Let us know in the comments below. Seven, sweet tea. If you're new to the US and have stumbled upon sweet tea, congratulations. 
you're probably in a state where it's safe to try grits for the first time. People in the northern part of the country think it's weird too. And yes, there's a lot of sugar. I was trying to find the extra sweet version. It's purple. Uh, I couldn't. So this is technically not sweet sweet tea. This is a uh, sweet tea and lemonade, also known as an Arnold Palmer. Now I've never had Milo's. Oh, that's nice. Way more lemonade though. I'd say, yeah, I like it. But I like, I add sugar to my sweet tea. So, hey, I was a hundred pounds heavier. There's a reason for that. Yeah, the whole sweet tea thing, that's just not come across the channel, or at least not to the UK. And tea with lemonade, some sort of water tea. That sounds pretty nasty as well. We have had lemon tea type products where it's listed as, as it sounds, lemon tea. And QT, which was like a um, powder tea with a lemon taste. Yeah, we've had a few things like that. I think you can get some type of cold coffee, cold tea, but it's really not a thing in the UK. But it does sound a bit horrible, so I think you can probably keep that one as well. Six, bacon bits. Is it real bacon? Really? Even if it says so on the jar, I have doubts, and I have no defense for this one. Five. Yeah, we have bacon bits in the UK. You get kind of like small plastic tubs of it. And it's basically overcooked, very salty, streaky bacon. But it's that salty that it's almost inedible. It's quite nice if you can try and dilute the salt somehow, but otherwise it barely resembles bacon. Deep fried festival food. Remember our discussion on corn dogs? Well, people new to the US can't quite wrap their brains around why we are obsessed with frying almost anything at the county festival. Oreos, Mars Bar, Sticks of Butter, Funnel Cake. Diabetes, anyone? What would you even think of frying them? They don't sound good at all. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Now, one of the things that he's just said was fried butter. Why would you want to eat that? I've never been spreading butter on a slice of bread and I thought, hmm, I think I'll take a bite of that butter. I didn't have time. I also don't own a deep fryer. So I got these pork cracklings instead. Yeah, we have pork scratchings, they're called in the UK. Pork cracklings, pork scratchings. We have those. We have the kind of puff crackle type version, as well as the actual proper pigskin rind type version, the raw version. Which uh, are fantastic. Also very southern thing. Oh, these two are in Very salty as well. This one. Oh, goodness. Mmm. Butcher's cut. You still feel the fat. <laughs> I'm not selling it, am I? <laughs> yeah, they're the pork crunch version, which are kind of nice, but they're not as nice as the real version. I mean, in the UK, the biggest brand or biggest kind of centre for them is the black country in the Midlands. So ones where you see sold as black country pork scratchings are likely to be the most authentic and the nicest absolutely horrendous as far as health goes because it's kind of essentially pink skin and fat with a whole load of salt but they do taste nice mm -hmm. so not quite the deep fried festival food but it's a stand in four yeah the whole deep fried thing that he showed on the actual image he showed a deep fried burger we do have butter burgers that you can get from a chip shop never seen them at a food stand at um, you know, a, a festival or something though like we would never batter a hot dog the only things that we kind of batter i know that you get the gimmick of deep fried mars bar in scotland but even they're pretty rare you have to shop around to try and actually buy one of them but as far as normal kind of deep fried food goes like that we have donuts which are deep fried and you can get the battered burger and you can get a battered sausage and obviously fish you can get that with batter but otherwise, we don't tend to really deep fry that much stuff. What about in the west of Europe? More towards Norway, Denmark, more towards that direction. I have the mental image that you batter less foods than what perhaps we do. It's almost like as if starting from you know the right-hand side, working through towards the left, all the way through to the US, further across to the left, you get the more battered and greasy and fatty type products you get. So yeah, I think of the right-hand side... Denmark, that sort of area, eating more healthy than the centre, the UK, and a lot more healthy than the left-hand side, the US. Am I completely wrong about that? Addict For my comments. school lunchbox in the 90s, is still good to eat. 
I don't really need to explain this one, do I? I'm still gonna. No, we eat. don't have them. We don't have them in the UK at all. Eat it. Twinkies are fantastic. They make chocolate ones. I think they make mint ones. Hmm. Oh man. That just kind of looks like a yep. donut. That was so good. That looked like um, a donut that was in a different shape. Because that looks almost like bread on the inside of it. If someone can describe what a Twinkie is actually like, then add it to the comment section because I couldn't really tell from the image. But it looked like a, like a different shaped donut. Three, Chicago pizza. If you haven't tried Chicago style pizza, it's at least worth giving it a go. It's a whole experience and you often need a fork and knife to eat it. Think of it more as a pizza casserole. It's another debated food, even among Americans. Let us- Yeah, in the UK though, Chicago pizza, or the brand Chicago pizza, isn't anything like the way that he's just describing it as almost, you know, like a flan on top of bread near enough, masses of topping and stuff. The only thing that really kind of defines a Chicago pizza with the box versions you get in the UK is a whole load of bread. Masses and masses of bread and, and then just a standard amount of topping. I think a lot of people don't buy the Chicago pizzas in the UK because it's just all bread. Yeah, you buy the pizza because you like the topping. You want the bread to fill you up and that sort of stuff. But really, it's the topping that you're after, isn't it? Mainly. You kind of have to take the bread as part of the package. But if you could double the topping and half the bread, you probably would. Rather than double the bread and half the topping, which is pretty much the way that we tend to get a lot of so-called Chicago pizzas. But I think that that's more of just because we don't get the real thing rather than because Chicago pizzas aren't nice. Maybe the actual proper Chicago pizzas from Chicago or any other part of America where they actually make them in the proper way, maybe they are nice. Maybe it's just the UK version of them aren't very good. Let's know more things in the comments below. Chicago style or New York style? Two. Two. Pop-Tarts, too dry, too sweet, too confusing. Are they really considered breakfast pastries? They can also- yeah, We get Pop-Tarts, but they're not very popular in the UK again. And I don't think we get anywhere near the variety or selection of what you get in the US. Burn your mouth as well as Hot Pockets if you stick them in a toaster Well, yeah, first. that as well. These ones grab my attention. Um, I'm gonna give you like 10 seconds to try to guess what flavor you think these are. I'm gonna get, look, let's, you still get to guess. Give me a second. I'll see if it gives it away. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. That's not gonna help, is it? Any case? It's a marshmallow. Uh, mm -mm -mm. One, biscuit. Now when we have Pop-Tarts, we have things like fruit inside them. That looked like it was full of marshmallows. <laughs> So even the Pop-Tarts, you even couldn't hold back and had to put a bit more sugar in even that. <laughs> Maybe it was cheese, but it looked like marshmallow. And knowing what the Americans have been like so far for the marshmallows, I'm pretty convinced it was marshmallow. Gets in gravy. A lot what? of visitors and those newly settled have commented that our biscuits are oddly bland and dry, especially as much sugar and salt as we add to food. Though what do they really find disgusting? Biscuits and gravy. It's gloopy, gloppy, and salty, and will make you question a few life choices. After yeah, for a start, American biscuits aren't biscuits. In the UK, we call them scones or scones. Basically, like a big lump of bread with a basted egg on the top to make it kind of a, like a shiny, sweeter type top to it. But essentially, it's commented bread. In the UK, when we think of biscuits, we think, you know, like the American cookies, but a slightly better version. I don't mean that as in, oh, we've got better biscuits than you. I mean as in, it's not just, you know, crumbly cookie. They're actual proper biscuits. I don't think you've got an American name for what we call our actual biscuits. We have cookies as well, but that's a separate thing. By the way, the biscuits that he's talking about are just normal traditional scones. But what he's talking about on top of them is just wrong. Who would put gravy on a scone? A scone is a pudding. You cut it in half and you add cream to one side and you add jam, usually strawberry, to the other. What you don't do is add gravy to it. Not unless you're mad. I have to say though, this one depends largely on who made it. Biscuits and gravy is fantastic. Are fantastic? Mm, try it.
again. Now, when we say gravy in the UK, we're thinking as in bisto, the sort of thing that you put on your roast dinner. That's what we call gravy. Maybe the American version of gravy isn't standard gravy because I'm pretty sure that things like what we call cooking sauce, so the sauce that you would perhaps put on, the white sauce you would put on a lasagna or something like that, Americans, they call that gravy, whereas we would just call it sauce. And that looks like that white type of sauce. So he's put the equivalent of a white or a cheese sauce on a scone, which is wrong on so many levels. <laughs> it's just gross. That one, you're right, that is disgusting, and the rest of the world does not understand. You can keep it. Another southern thing. Don't, don't go north and go biscuits and gravy. So, have you tried any of these? Also, what are some foods in your country visitors might find weird? Let us know in the comments below. And The thing that he hasn't mentioned, which I thought would come up straight away, but he obviously doesn't realise just how American it is, is peanut butter and jello. Now, to everybody else around the world, that's just peanut butter with jam, all on the same piece of bread. Now, we have peanut butter sandwiches and we have jam sandwiches, but if you've ever tried to combine the two, you'll realise just how sickly sweet it is, almost to the point of not being able to eat even you know, one sandwich, one slice of bread worth of peanut butter with jam or jello. It's like getting a chocolate bar, dipping it in sugar, and then dipping that in honey, and then wrapping it in maple syrup and deep frying it, and then dipping it in a bit more sugar. That's how sickly it seemed to taste. And I know this because I kept on hearing so much about American peanut butter and jello that I thought, well, maybe it is nice. Because peanut butter, it kind of glues your mouth shut, so maybe it would be quite nice. Because when we make a peanut butter, we tend to put butter on the bread, and then we add the peanut butter, and that kind of makes the peanut butter a little bit more buttery and makes it a bit easier to eat, because it can kind of glue your face together, can't it? Peanut butter is not great for that, especially if you've got really fresh bread that then sticks to the roof of your mouth and makes it almost inedible because you can't physically chew it. Not because it doesn't taste great, but because you just can't chew it. So maybe adding a bit of jam to it, you'll loosen it up a bit like the butter, and it'll make it a bit easier and a bit nicer. So I thought I would give it a go. And I've never tasted anything so horrifically sickly in my life, except for one other product. And that was a product that I bought from Lidl. And it was another version of American peanut butter. It was actually advertised and says on the jar something like peanut spread or something similar to that. But it's basically peanut butter. It's just an American version of peanut butter. So, you know, their actual peanut butter isn't even as standard as what we get in the UK because the peanut butter that I had in that jar was we have a milk that's called condensed milk and it's like a very heavily sugared creamy milk type stuff I don't even really know what condensed milk comes from because it's got way too much sugar to be standard milk or cream but either way if anybody knows what condensed milk is if you had condensed milk and you mix that with peanut butter that's pretty much what their jar of peanut butter was that I bought from Lidl that was advertised as an American peanut butter type spread. Well, I managed to try less than a quarter of a teaspoon. I just literally had a really small amount and it was just horrifically sweet. Just way, way too sweet to even eat that little bit on the teaspoon. So then you then add jam on top of that. I can't imagine how bad that would be. I know that our, our version of peanut butter, which isn't particularly sweet, it's just fairly standard. It doesn't taste any sweeter than actual butter. It's just a nutty version of butter. And yet even our version of peanut butter with a fairly standard jam, which is quite sweet, it's made from sugar, so it's going to be sweet. But it's not you know, horrifically sweet, it's just fairly standard. But adding the two together in the UK is still beyond what we can take. So then you think about the American version of the peanut butter, the American version of the jam, and then you combine those two. That's just hell, that is. That's just sheer hell in your mouth. It's going to be so sweet that you're never going to want to eat anything again. That's how I picture that in my mind, having tried it before. But whether these things really are that bad in the US, I'm not sure. They can't be that bad. Otherwise, people just wouldn't eat it, would they? Surely Americans, even if you're used to sweet stuff, you must have some things where you're going to try it and you think, that's just too sweet, I can't eat that. Yeah, in the UK, we used to sweet sort of foods and stuff like that, so we have sweet products. And if we have something that's a bit too sweet, then we know it's too sweet. Well, surely in America, it's just the same. You might know, you know, you might be used to a lot of things being too sweet, but you know when they're too sweet still. So why aren't you then choosing the things that are less sweet? 
which would then surely kind of dictate what foods are being offered to you because if you're buying a particular food type the unsweetened or the less sweet version the more normal version of something if you're buying it then the the producers are going to keep producing it and then they would be the dominant factor it must be because you're actually actively seeking out those super sweet foods which are just we can't even eat them they're just so sickly sweet so i'm surprised that that's something that you actually purposely seeking out we can't even put up with it occasionally let alone actively choosing it what about the rest of the world what are your foods like are they just as bad as american foods or are they just as boring as british foods or are they somewhere in between the two let me know in the comment section he's at the end of his video as you can see so we're not going to go any further with his video but before you go i need to speak about our videos becoming demonetized all of the time as many of you know, most of the videos that we bring you are in one way or another controversial. Even like this video, we're not praising some foods. We're saying that some things are horrible and some things are not so nice. Other things we're saying are really nice. But because we're expressing an opinion about something, it means that a lot of the advertisers will shy away from being involved with that particular video. Which means that the video gets demonetized instantly. Most of our videos are demonetized because we try to bring you content that we know you're going to want to know about or that you're going to want to watch or because it's interesting or funny or something like that. We prioritise what we think you're going to like best rather than whether we can have it monetized. The problem with that is we do this as a full-time job. This is how we make our living. And if all of our videos are demonetized, it means that we've got a very big problem. You'll notice on the bottom of your screen, you have a thanks button. That is a way that you can support the channel and enable us to be able to keep making these videos because at the end of the day it's our full-time job and if all of our videos are demonetized it makes it very difficult to continue so we really do need your support the other alternative is that we make more tame videos but then we're not going to be bringing you the best content that we can we want to give you the best videos to watch the most interesting whether they're controversial or not and i think that you would prefer to watch that than something tamed down but the only way that we can continue to be able to do that is with your support. So I would encourage as many of you as possible to try and show support. Okay, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.